Okay, so um, chapter 10 is your fundamentals of metal, metal um, costing. Okay, this is another keynote lecture um, for the uh, summary of your own chapters. Okay. So costing. If you think about costing, we're talking about the solidification process, okay? Um, so you definitely need to know what solidification process is, yeah? So here we have molten metal. Molten metal is nothing but you are melting the metal into liquid, okay? So most of your metal is in solid state and room temperature, and we're going to increase the temperature okay, until that solid metal melts right into liquid. So we're dealing with a change of phase from solid to liquid. And it's very hot, okay, very, very hot. Um, I try to uh, make you understand in every um, class I've been teaching, and I want you to know the smell, right, the heat, the environment of manufacturing is not a joke. Okay, it's not always a uh, shiny and clean <laughs> facility um, that you are familiar to. Okay, um, billions of products that we're making coming out from an um, environment like this, and you have to respect the people who work there. Okay, because they're providing everything we need, sacrificing actually their life, especially health. Uh, they are the fathers, right? Fathers, mothers, um, uh, uh, so many people, yeah. So therefore, uh, don't uh, don't take manufacturing for granted. Don't take all the things you have for granted. Okay. Be thankful and grateful for them. And of course, if you have time, I pray for them, yeah, because they make these things for us. So anyway, so going back to costing, the very first thing that got to stay in your head. It's a molten metal, and we are increasing the temperature all the way for the metal to melt, okay? And we're going to pour that thing, okay, molten metal, into a mold. So every manufacturing okay, process, what are we doing again? We are doing a plastic teeth formation to shape right, our material. That's our material. We're going to pour it into a mold to shape it, okay? Uh, of course. If your temperature is going to stay forever elevated, you can't even touch it. You know, we got to allow, right, that temperature to go back down. Temperature, again, is nothing but your internal structures are moving, okay? We're loosening, we're loosening up all the internal structures so we can shape them, you know? If they're so rigid, you can shape them. So, therefore, you definitely need to change the temperature of that material by elevating it, meaning... Uh, making it uh, go away from each other in that structural arrangement, okay, your atoms, uh, your electrons, your protons, and your neutrons got to uh, move, okay, in order for us to be able to shape, all right, these material in a mold, and then we're going to push, all right, all these internal structure back to their, uh, their arrangement, okay, the original arrangement, so that's what are we doing also? It looks like we're looking at the temperatures going down, meaning like we're not letting them move as much as we want them to move in the molten metal state. Okay, so bringing them back uh, to their normal arrangement. All right, again, your internal structure of your material. So anyway, that's what we're doing in solidification yeah, process. And uh, common word, costing. Okay, so before reaching the mold cavity, that's just a shape that we're putting right on our molten metal to shape it. So your mold cavity is a shape of your product that you're making, yeah? So the molten metal is going to flow through a variety of passages. So the first one is your basin, pouring basin, your sprue, okay, channels, your runners, your risers. In your gating system, that's 
got to do everything got to do with the flow right and that flow speed is so important okay the way the matter of flow even if it looks like you know like um, easy but it isn't okay it needs uh, years worth of um, experience and skill to be able to handle this flow okay whether you use a machine okay uh, or automation okay designing casting analytical tools so what do we use we use the three major okay uh, theorem the very first one is your Bernoulli's theorem second one is a continuity law and the next one is a Reynolds number the very important right so why do why are they important uh, because um, we can be able to use to analyze right our design of casting okay designing all right um, these analytical tools um, that you have seen are listed in the previous slides okay we use them for achieving an appropriate flow rate okay Again, the flow rate of your mold and metal right into the mold and eliminating your defects, of course, associated with that flow. Okay? We, won't, we, don't, we don't want uh, this molten, you can call it fluid liquid, okay? this molten metal flow okay? mess up. We don't want to mess up. And we definitely want with particular speed, right, depending on the product that you're making, so in order for us to be able to achieve that appropriate flow okay, rate, we're going to use these analytical tools, right? And again, don't forget it. The first one is your Bernoulli's right, theorem. The second one is a continuity law. And the last one is your Reynolds number. Then comes to handling all the pure metal, so solidification costing of pure metal. Okay, so this takes place again at constant temperature. So when you deal with costing of pure metal, we can do it right at a constant temperature. Okay. Alloys. When we deal with the alloys, right, it can happen in a wide range of temperatures. It depends, of course, on the alloy material. And you definitely need to consult our right, handbook of the alloys to take a look at the range of temperature, right, what temperature you need to okay, elevate in order for the alloy to melt. Okay, pure metal, right, uh, you can go with a constant temperature. Handling alloy, okay, and costing, you have to deal with range of temperatures, and that depends on the alloy, okay, material of the alloy. All right, the next thing you need to know is the solidification point. Um, this can be determined, meaning like you can get this point right from the phase diagram. Um, and uh, they, they're, they depend on, again, the type of the metal. Okay? So for technologically important metals, right, um, this point, solidification point, is so important okay, in uh, making the product. So you can be able to get this point, right, by developing something called a phase diagram. It's nothing but it's a change of phase, right, from solid to liquid and then back liquid to solid, yeah. Composition, cooling rate, 
molten metal. So since we elevated the temperature of the metal, so they're in molten state, liquid state, and you definitely need to cool back down and change that liquid, okay, back to solid. And that rate, all right, cooling rate, is important. The composition, okay, of that molten metal is also important because they affect, all right, they affect the size and also the shape. Okay, of grains, your dendrites, all right? Remember the internal structure that I show you about the dendrites here? Something stuck, right? Or, or something looks like the column and stuck on the wall here yeah, of your mold, and the other ones come off here. Yeah. And um, so these grains, all right, non-dendrites, and then the dendrites, the size and the shape of them, right, can be affected by composition of the metal and more importantly, cooling rate of that metal. So if you cool down real fast, you're gonna mess up with all the grains and your dendrites are right inside of your material in your product, and we don't want that. Okay, so size and structures of grains and dendrites, so they influence properties of solidified costing. Very important, we want these grains, all right, dendrites, um, and they depend on the material, all right? Some of them got to be like this, and some of them got to be in uh, different grains and different dendrites and different size of dendrites, different structures of dendrites. Um, because they can be able to induce all right, fractures, deformation inside of the material in your um, product, is product, okay? So your end product. So therefore, um, we pay attention. And uh, this phenomenon is found out by a scientist, and uh, we give it a, a name, all right? Uh, we call that Chofrino's rule, okay? And every time you see the numbers of it, uh, we're dealing with the size and structures, right, of the grains and dendrites. Grain structure is very important because in order for us to be able to get the desired properties in our product, in our material, right, you definitely need to uh, play with this, control this, okay? And it's complete depends on the flow, you know, your fluid flow, which is your molten matter. So um, you can control this, okay? Uh, by using many different methods, of course, and by using many different means, okay? In order for us to be able to get the desired you know, properties. So we don't want a mess of internal structure, right? We want the internal structure to be, um, to be something that is going to support our product design, okay? So that your internal structure got to stay in the arrangement that is going to support your product design. And when we shape, right, our molten metal, we have to play with uh, the speed, okay, the flow speed. And um, why do we do it? Because we want to control that grain structure. Okay, and that's the only reason that we do it in order for us to be able to get the desired properties. All right, so here, when you think of a metal, all right, you gotta know like most of the metal they contract. So this contraction of the metal, contraction is nothing but it's just like um, your material, okay? They decrease in size or they decrease in uh, range, okay? So solidification and cooling, you have to deal with your material. Your material happens to be in costing metal, okay? And uh, pay attention to their contraction, yeah? And because of that contraction, okay, you got to deal with something called cavities right inside of that material so cavities they can form in casting all right doing solidification doing cooling right so therefore pay attention to the contraction of the metal most of them can be able to contract meaning not reduce in size and we have to uh, 
consider right that effect in our manufacturing processes. All right, the next big thing is porosity. All right, porosity can be caused by gases. So every time you think about porosity, think about we have a, we have gases all right, inside of our material trapped. Or they, because they evolve, right, during your solidification process, and then they, the gases, they can't be able to escape out of the material. So they stay inside of the material, right, trapped in it. So porosity can be a very huge problem, okay, significant problem, and they can have adverse effects um, on properties of casting, right? So porosity can have adverse effects on properties of casting. Defects. You've got to master defects, right? If you want to get into the manufacturing process, because that's your enemy, and you have to get rid of it. And you have to be very skillful, or be very knowledgeable in order to get rid of them or minimize them or reduce them. Yeah. So various defects can develop in casting. So why? Because of the lack of control of materials and process variables. If you cannot control your materials, and if you cannot control your process variables, right? Uh, I have given you uh, equations, right, um, to study, and uh, you can see many variables, right, affecting the processes in manufacturing. Of course, in costing, um, if you cannot be able to control your material, if you cannot be control your process variables, you will definitely end up getting defects. Dimensional changes, cracking, okay, hot tearing. So uh, dimensional changes, they can arise, right, uh, when we're doing solidification, when we're doing cooling down, right, um, our shaped molten metal back to solid at that time. You can be able to get a cracking, right, in the material. And those kind of cracking, we call that dimensional changes because crack definitely change, right? the dimensions um, of our material. Casting defects. So there are several basic categories of casting defects that we have learned right uh, in this chapter. And I want you to be so aware of them, okay, on um, here on this Diagram, you can review your misrends, your co shot, right? Microporosity, shrinkage, right? Mismatch, metal penetration, so and so, so and so, so and so, right? Okay, so this is the end of your chapter 10 keynote for lecture, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop here.